Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I, I have read uh, all of Quarterly. I sat down and read through all of it in a day. And um, I, first of all, before we sort of get into it, can you tell us a little bit more about the Half Half Man team? And then we can sort of discuss. Oh, sure, absolutely. Uh, so the Apartment team, uh, it's it's an it's what I call an open team in the sense that the people that are with us, uh, I hope they stay for a long time. And and but we want to be joined by other people in this journey because I don't want to. Nothing is ever closed, you know. Like and that's the way I see everything, you know. Even my, the routines I do, I'm always thinking them again and again and again. So nothing is ever closed. Um, so to start the project with, um, uh, I the first people I, I I decided to talk about were people that, the all the things they've ever done and released were things that I really uh, was impressed by, and uh, and I in a certain sense I'm a fan of everyone that is in the team. Um, and so we have uh, Jared Koff, uh, which is like, as you guys know, he's a phenomenal uh, technician, magician, guy, rock and roll star. Uh, yeah. We get uh, Will Houston, which is like, it's not only a great uh, magician and, and, uh, and knowledge of, of history of magic, and he's probably the from the young generation is one of the people that is like taking the, the this burden of, of the history of magic and finding out new things and uh, reworking it just he's recently at a PhD uh, on uh, and he, he finished his PhD uh, and his thesis was about Professor Hoffman which is amazing that That's you can PhD, you know, like that is just like congrats on that. Just that alone is amazing, um, and he's uh, he's an amazing editor too, which it's something someone we needed in the team for someone that is knowledgeable of magic and knows how to edit uh, magic texts. So that was very important uh, to have on the team. We have uh, uh, I I I talk with Dennis Bear about making part of the team because Dennis just just this cool uh, guy and he was the one that said oh you know what I should do this with Pete and I go like I don't even want to talk with Pete Pete is one of my favorite magicians I go like I don't I, you know like and he goes like no 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 he and Pete absolutely from day one joined the team very happily and uh, and so their article is together uh, and they have they have more coming up on a kind of a series of sessions, written down sessions. Um, uh, then I also wanted to, you know, like that's that's one of the things that I wanted with Half Half Men. Is like, is not. I don't want to look. I'm from Portugal. Most of my influences are from Spain, and I have a lot of uh, Spanish friends that will definitely be, be joining the team uh, sooner. Uh, but I don't want it to go like, hey, let's bring all the Spanish magic here. Because as much as I'm, I, I love it, and I think it's probably the best school of magic in the world, that is just my opinion. And I want people to to read from other sources and other people. So I wanted it to be culturally diverse. You know, so we have Jared from the United States. We have Pete and Dennis from, uh, from Germany. We have Will from the UK. Um, and uh, Roberto Mancilla was uh, another person that I, I, I talked with. Is uh, for the ones that don't know him, is an amazing um, uh, parlor card magician from Argentina. And it's, his work with cards on a parlor setting is like it's really a strong, interesting, profound. Uh, and he is an amazing uh, thinker too. And he is always thinking about like new ways of approaching and presenting magic. Um, and then we also had uh, Steve Thompson, that probably is the, the less known name, but if you know that he did the Glance magazine test, uh, that is worth already your, your go, oh, that was the guy who thought about this, which is already like really strong. And he, 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 he brings his background uh, into the article too. It for me is also something important. It's like, you know, I, I can ask many people to talk about magic, but there are not many people who can talk about magic and another subject on a deeper way because, you know, that very few people kind of specialize on, on certain things. And so we wanted different backgrounds culturally, different backgrounds from like even your profession 
um, and uh, and we'll be soon having more people joining the team. But uh, basically, that was the first the the the, um, the initial team that we we gathered for for the first quarterly. Well, I wanted I I said this before we started, but I want everybody to hear it too. I want to commend you on um, keeping the voices of all the different authors in the first issue. Um, and you know, you credited Will for being able to edit, you know, the different languages and and making everything work. But it really is um, incredible to read because you have so many different styles of uh, if you know the if you know the magicians, if you know the people that are writing it, or you've seen their work, you can hear their voice in it, and you can you, you sort of almost go into the mind space of whoever you're reading, and you sort of look at things from that perspective. And then when you come out of the book, when you you know, you come out of it and you set it down, then all the stuff that you read starts to gel and you know, you sort of assimilate all of that information to yourself, which is really interesting. Um, yeah, that that is all that was all Will's work. You know, I have to like I have to I, I we talked about it and we talked about the idea of keeping the voices of the authors uh, authentic especially for example when we're talking about someone who, who the main language is not English like for example Pete and Dennis or or uh, Roberto you know those are the artist ones to to have the voices uh, have almost the same flavor as they would have on their na native tongue you know but uh, uh, other than that, you know, like that, the, the work itself was Will, so it's like, if, if, if it's well done, it's Will that did the good job, you know. Like, you know. Um, Dave mentioned earlier that the notebook is like a, like a treasure map, um, and that it makes you think about magic on a deeper level. Um, you read a lot of stuff today, and it's like, you know, there's a sentence that says, think about your magic. And that's kind of missing the point, you know. It, it it should be something that happens to you, not something necessarily that you have to search out. I feel like, and that's what this did for me, as I was reading it. Is I, you know, I was reading these perspectives from these different artists, and going, "Wow, this is okay. Hold on, I I want to stop, and really consider what they were saying and how that can affect, you know, what I do." And it it it. It like happened to me. I it, it you know instead of instead of me going okay now I'm gonna take this I'm gonna think about it. It was just like it just sort of rushed through my body in <laughs> in like a really creative delicious like a drug. Like a drug it was. It started in my head and went to my toes. It was it was really nice. Oh cool. I'm I'm glad. You know 